Welcome from uh, the to the people in Sydney there, some in Tasmania, some from Western Australia, some from Queensland, and I think John is down in Victoria still, I'm not sure. So welcome everyone. And uh, our subject today, we're going to open the word of God and uh, go through. But first I want to introduce our subject. I want to talk about having uh, children. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of uh, couples, they, they're desperate to have children. And uh, it sometimes doesn't always work out. I know my brother and his wife, they had no children and they were getting into their 40s. And uh, my brother's wife was desperate to have uh, children. And uh, they're unable to. And so they were doing IVF. You've heard of IVF? This is where they have these interventions to help people who can't have children to have children. Yes. And uh, oh, I was kind of sceptical. I thought, oh, they're never going to have children. They're getting into their 40s and uh, it's too late. I thought it would never happen because they had failed attempts and it, it's never easy. Um, but this year, to my surprise, on the 2nd of February, my brother and his wife had twin boys and it brought great joy happiness to their lives. Now, this sermon is not about IVF, but it's an example because in ancient times, in Bible times, they never had IVF. There was no way to have a baby. If you were a woman who was barren, as they called it in those days, a woman who couldn't you know, have a baby, there was no IVF. Hmm. And there was only, there's no way. But we are going to talk about that today. There were cases where women who were unable to have babies did have babies in the Bible. Hmm. Hmm. Barren women who, who, through God's intervention, were able to have a child. And so we're going to look at the Bible, and uh, this is the subject. Actually, in the Bible, there are seven barren women, you know, seven women who are unable to have babies, mm. who had miraculous interventions and had babies. Seven yeah. women. We want to talk about those seven today. Uh and the seven miracle babies, if you like. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the title of this sermon, it's The Seven Barren Women. Mm. Now, I'm going to assume you know the Bible stories because we're going to go fairly quickly, and if you haven't read the Bible stories, you need to catch up and mm. read them after because we, we, we can't look at every, read every single story all the way through. I'm going to touch on the points that are important in mm. these stories. The first barren woman we find in the Bible, the woman with un that was unable to bear children, was Sarah. This was mm. Abraham's wife. Yep. She was his only true wife. She was also his half-sister. I think in those days, you know, genetics wasn't so degraded like we have now. Like mm. in America, <laughs> you know, into their family. Now... <sighs> In Genesis chapter 12, uh, verse 11, we see that Sarah was a beautiful woman, mm -hmm. so beautiful that Abraham lied about his wife. You know, he didn't want, he thought, oh, oh another man's going to kill me because and take her because, because of her beauty. She was a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. Genesis, uh, so he, he lied to Pharaoh and he lied to the king of Gerar and about his wife because she was such a beauty 
It says in Genesis 12, verse 11, that uh, um, that uh, I know thou art fair, a fair woman to look upon. So she was a beautiful woman. And uh, because of this, it's, um, uh, well, obviously Abraham loved her, but he was also afraid he would lose mm. her. Her beauty here in uh, Genesis 11, verse 30, it also says that uh, Sarah was barren and she had no child. Mm -hmm. But the angels visited Sarah and Abraham and they promised a child. In Genesis 17, verse 9, they promised a son. And it was almost comical because... Uh, why was it comical? Because they were old people. Mm. And uh, Genesis 17, verse 19, is the promise given that uh, Sarah, thy wife, shall indeed bear thee a son. So this was the promise. And uh, Sarah didn't, she laughed. She thought, I'm old. I'm in my 90s. Mm. 90 years old. Man, past childbearing. How am I supposed to have a son? Mm. I, I know they were much more vigorous in those days. You know, they lived longer than we do, sure. Mm -hmm. But still, she was too old. And uh, also, uh, they desired a son so much. It was such a big thing to have an heir that they didn't wait. And they sought to have a child by another means, by the, mm -hmm. by the slave, by Hagar, mm -hmm. by Sarah's handmaid, her slave. Because they thought, Sarah, how can she conceive? But in Genesis chapter 21, verse 2, a miracle happened. How can she possibly conceive? Genesis chapter 21, verse 2, and it says, Sarah conceived really, mm -hmm. and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. So she had a, a child. Abraham was like 100 years old, and mm -hmm. it says in the, the following verses, and uh, Sarah was 90. It was old. It was certainly a miracle. Even for those days, it was a miracle. Mm -hmm. And Isaac, the birth of Isaac, brought happiness into their home. It brought gladness. It brought joy. Mm -hmm. The great thing. And Isaac was not just an ordinary baby. He was a miracle baby. Mm. And as such... He reflected Christ. He's a picture of Christ, if you like, mm -hmm. that was given. And if you look in the Isaac's life, you see there are many, many things of Isaac's life through which we can picture Christ. His father was a rich man, you know, a mighty prince in Canaan. That was Abraham. And Isaac was heir of his father, you know, a mm -hmm. son that would grow up to inherit Things of his father. His father loved him. Mm. And much like Christ and his father. Um, also, uh, Isaac was chosen as a sacrifice, mm. like Jesus was a sacrifice. And Isaac, the Lord said to Abraham, Go and sacrifice your son Isaac. Mm. In Genesis chapter 22, we find the whole story there. So they went to find the mountain where they would sacrifice Isaac. And uh, Isaac carried the wood for the sacrifice on his back, mm. just like the wooden cross was carried on the back of Christ. And he carried that wood up the lonely hill, and we believe that hill was Mount Moriah, the same hill where Jesus was crucified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, many years they were living, in, they were in Canaan. The Lord showed him the same mountain. And Isaac laid on the on the altar willing, willingly, a willing sacrifice, just like Jesus would be, a willing sacrifice, as his father asked him to. 
So what a great picture of Jesus Isaac was. You know, he wasn't sacrificed ultimately. The, the substitute ram was found in the in the bushes. But that gave a great picture of the future of Christ, how he would save and deliver the people. So here we have miracle, miracle son number one. Yeah. Miracle son. And um, also um, in Galatians 4 verse 4, let's read that. So here we have in, in the book of Genesis, the first, the plan of salvation being known through, through an example of a, of a miracle son that was born to a barren woman. Mm. All very impossible <laughs> by the seam of it, that nothing is impossible with God. Here in Galatians 4 verse 4 we read, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman under the law. So, mm. so this is about Christ as well. So we see the picture. The second barren woman, the second woman that was unable to bear, bear children in the Bible, we read, had a miraculous child, was, uh, was um, in the story of Isaac. Mm. The story of Isaac. Isaac had a wife called mm. Rebecca. She was barren, and that's mm. written. Mm hmm now, let's read about barren, uh, this woman in Genesis 25, verse 21. You'll see she's a barren woman. She was unable to have children. So this is the next generation down. So uh, in the next generation, we find the same thing. Uh, Genesis 25, verse 21. And it says um, here, and Isaac... Uh, about Isaac. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, meaning she couldn't have children. Mm. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. So here's another miracle baby. Isaac prayed, and his wife conceived. And twins were born. And so Isaac also had a had a beautiful wife. She was a chosen woman. Mm. You remember the story how uh, Isaac couldn't find a wife. No. And his servant had to be sent to Mesopotamia to search for a wife. So she was like a chosen woman, the mm. chosen one. But the problem was the chosen woman, the chosen wife. Mm. Baron. I'm barren, yeah. <laughs> And uh, she was a willing, willing woman who was who became his wife and travelled, left her father's house and became his wife. And uh, <clears throat> again, we see the picture. She was barren and yet she had a miraculous son. Son, she actually had twins. Yeah. But only one, only Jacob became the heir. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in the life of Jacob, do we find a picture of Christ like we found with Isaac? A miraculous baby? In Genesis 32, we see him uh, running from his brother. Hmm. And then on his return to his father, Jacob experiences a time of trouble hmm. because of sin. And he struggled and he clung on by faith in that struggle. And his body was affected. He was struggling, wrestling with the angel, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And the angel touched his hip, his thigh. And uh, he was, uh, his body was affected by this, this struggle he went through. Mm -hmm. And in Genesis 32, verse 28, so he went through a real uh, wrestle there because of sin. Uh, here we have um, Genesis 32, verse 28. Um, and thy name shall no, me, no more be called Jacob, but Israel, for thou as a prince hast power with God and with men and hast prevailed. 
So here is Jacob going through the great struggle and he became the father of a great nation. So he reminds us a bit of the struggle that Jesus went through in Gethsemane because of sin, not because of his own sin, but because of our sin. And Jacob went through that time of trouble uh, because of his own sin. It says about Christ written uh, that, um, well, no, it actually says about Jacob that uh, the sense of guilt pressed on his soul and his sins rose up before him to shut him out from God in that night of wrestling. But in his extremity, he remembered God's promises. So he, he went through that struggle. It sounds like Christ in Gethsemane. Let us go on to the third barren woman. You know who the third barren woman we find in the Bible is? The third woman who couldn't have a baby but had a miraculous baby. Who was that woman? Anna? No, not yet. The wife of Manoah. Rachel. Wife of Manoah, not yet. You're jumping ahead. Rachel, I think. Rachel. Rachel. Thank you. Rachel. 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 So we come to the next generation. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this was Jacob's wife now, Rachel. Mm. And Rachel, who was she? She was a beautiful woman as well. Mm. And Jacob loved her. He went, he went to uh he remember he he committed his mistake, his mm. uh, his with his family, and he he went away from his family. Mm -hmm. he went to uh relatives of his, Laban and his daughters. Mm. And he spent seven years laboring for Rachel's hand in marriage. And instead, mm. Laban gave him Leah. He didn't want her, <laughs> her sister. So then he, uh, he, he received, uh, he had to work another seven years for Rachel. Mm. Mm. Okay. And uh, so then he married both Leah and Rachel. But he really only loved Rachel. Mm. That was the one he loved. He didn't love Leah. That was the deception. Oh, yeah, crazy. And um, you see, when in Genesis 29, you see how he first met Rachel. He, Rachel was the one, not this Leah. That was, mm. that was Laban's deception. Here in Genesis 29, verse 11. So he loved her very much. It says here, and Jacob kissed Rachel. Oh, yes, he loved her. Mm. <laughs> he kissed her. And um, verse 17 also says here in Genesis 29 that Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favoured. Oh, she was beautiful more than Leah. Mm. And he loved her. That was his preference. Yeah. And then in Genesis 29, verse 31, you see it says there, and when the Lord saw Leah was hated, he opened her womb. But Rachel was barren. You see, the woman who, who was hated, she was having children and children. Yeah. But Rachel was barren. The one no. that was loved, there's no children. And, uh, and then she was very upset. And then in verse, uh, in Genesis chapter 1, verse, chapter 30, verse 1. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children. Rachel envied her sister. Oh, she man. envied Leah. And mm. she said to Jacob, give me children else, or else I die. Mm. She was desperate. There's no IVF. <laughs> she was desperate. And after 10 children had been born to Jacob from other women, you know, mm. The handmaids and Leah, whatever. What happened? A miraculous baby was born. Another miracle baby we find in Genesis 30, verse 22. Mm. It says, um, and God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened unto her and opened her womb. And who was born? Joseph. Miracle baby of Joseph. Mm. And was Joseph a picture of Christ in his life? This oh, yeah. miracle baby? He was very much. Mm. He was the favorite of his father, the most loved son of a son of his father. It says Jacob loved Jake, 
Mm -hmm. uh, Joseph more than all his brothers. Oh, yeah. It was, you know. And we can think of that with God the Father. He loved Christ more than all the others. Yep. Christ loved son. Mm -hmm. This is my beloved son. Yeah. You know, to him, these verses say in the Bible. Uh, so he is the most loved son. Also, when you think of Joseph, how he reflects Christ, his father loved him so much he gave him a special coat, a coat of many colours. His brothers were jealous of him and hated him. You know, people were, all the uh, people of Israel, they hated Jesus as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the leaders of Israel, they hated him. They were jealous. They were his, you know, his, his brothers by blood. Jesus was born as a Jew. But they didn't like him, and and Jacob's Joseph's brothers betrayed him. Mm. They sold him for twenty pieces of silver, and you know, yeah, it's the same with Jesus. You know, he was sold for thirty pieces of silver too. Mm. And uh, and because they sold uh, Joseph into slavery, he went into Egypt, and because of that situation, he became the savior of their family. Mm. Because we know the famine came and uh, Joseph rose to power in Egypt and he saved his family. He became the saviour because of uh, being sold. Okay. And his brothers also came and bowed before him in Egypt. You know the story. Yeah. So very much Joseph reflects Jesus as a saviour figure. Mm -hmm. Even though... Yeah, he was oppressed and persecuted um, and uh, sold by his bro half-brothers, should I say. They weren't even full brothers, sold into slavery. And Jesus was the same. He was oppressed <laughs> by his own people. And mm. uh, and they even uh, sold him to be uh, into the hands of wicked men to be crucified mm. and abused. So very much Joseph is a, a miracle baby, that, and we see in the story of Joseph the picture of Christ. So here we have the first three barren women in the Bible, and notice they come one generation after another. You have mm -hmm. Abraham, you have Isaac, you have Jacob, and all their wives, mm -hmm. each of their wives were barren. Each of them had miracle babies, which is interesting. Next, we jump forward. The next barren woman we find in Judges, and which Brother Hardy mentioned, I think. Yeah, Manoah's wife. Manoah's wife. Mm. Now, let's see if we can see a picture of Jesus in this miraculous son born to Manoah's wife here in Judges chapter 13. Judges chapter 13. In Judges chapter 13, we have the whole story. You can read it after if you haven't heard it before. But this, this family were living in Zora, which was a town on the edge of enemy territory, right in next to enemy territory, right near the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And Manoah's wife was a woman. They were true to God, these people. And here in verse 13, uh, and it says, And Manoah and his wife, we don't know the name of his wife, no. and his wife, it says, was barren and bare not. Mm. There in that verse, in Judges chapter 13, verse 2. And an angel appeared here in the next verse, appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now uh, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Mm -hmm. And then down in the next verses, they uh, told for this woman not to, uh, there were certain things that they were not to do, not to feed him any unclean food or strong drink or cut his hair. So there were certain vows or things they were to do. Um, and then in verse 34, 24, and the same chapter. Mm -hmm. Verse 24, let's read that. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. 
and the child grew and the Lord blessed him. Can we find a picture of Christ in Samson, this miracle child? Yes. There is to a degree. No eating. Yes, there were there were um yes, I there mean. Were health uh, there was, these were temperance rules, if you like. Mm. It was a sacred calling and, mm. and a special vow before God from birth. Mm -hmm. Like Jesus, there was a special calling that he had. And also, uh, Samson was to be the deliverer of Israel. Yeah. Was at the time, Israel was being oppressed by the enemy. And if you think about Christ, when his, and Jesus came, he was to be the deliverer of the nation of Israel. And they were being oppressed by Satan. Mm. And uh, Samson was a strong man. He uh, did many feats of strength. Uh, if you remember, he, he when he was young, he slew a lion. Mm. He, um, he he slew many Philistines. He was strong. You know, he burst ropes that when they tied him up. He slew a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of an ass, with a donkey's mm. jawbone. Mm. And he ruled Israel and was the judge for 30, 20 years, apparently. Yeah. He took away the gates of Gaza and took, took them many miles away. And so uh, Samson is representing Christ in that he was, uh, he was strong and powerful against God's enemies, against Satan in a spiritual sense. Jesus was strong. Mm. He overcame, you know, devils and evil spirits. He was, uh, you know, a strong in a spiritual sense, Christ was. So this is how Samson is a picture of Christ. Also, if you think about it, when Samson died, it's, it's written that Samson was able to, uh, he did more to deliver Israel in his death. Mm. He, uh, he killed more Philistines in his death than in his life. So he yep. did more to deliver Israel in his death than in his life. Mm -hmm. And if you think about Christ, Christ has done more to deliver us in his death than, than in what he did even in his life. Okay. I hope you understand that point. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As you get that point. Okay. The fifth barren woman we find in the Bible is uh we mentioned someone mentioned it before it's yes, Hannah. 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 Hannah, yes. That is in first Samuel chapter one. Let us go there. First Samuel chapter one. She had no baby, but she had a miracle baby. Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. So there's many stories in the Bible, but we're going very, very quickly. I'm sorry, but mm. you have to learn the Bible to know all the pictures. Here we have uh, Hannah, and she was married to a man named Elkanah. Yeah. Elkanah was, I think, a priest or was the priest yeah, of the tribe of Levi, mm -hmm. if I'm correct. And uh, Hannah was also desperate to have children. And because um, her husband, Elkanah, Elkanah, couldn't wait, he married another woman, Hanina, um, to have children. Mm. And so uh, I suppose this only increased Hannah's desperation. Probably. To have children, to be, you know, mm. be accepted wife, if you like, the number one. And uh, <clears throat> here in First Samuel Chapter 1, verse 5. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. So here we see that Hannah was barren. She had no children. And Penina, the verse before, obviously she, she had sons and daughters, etc. So she was the rival wife, if you like. Mm. But here is poor old Hannah not able to have children. And uh, not until she prayed in desperation 
you know, in weeping and tears, not until she was absolutely at the end. Mm -hmm. She was desperate to have a child. Here in uh, chapter 1, verse 19, only until then. Um, here it says, and Elkanah knew his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. So, and verse 20, and it came to pass when the time of a uh, time was come after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, because I have asked him of the Lord. So here is another miraculous baby. And you see, Elkanah actually loved her. He loved her. Although he had another wife or whatever, with another sons and children, he really loved her. She had a beautiful character, apparently. Obviously, a beautiful character, the way she brought up Samuel, so devoted to care for this child. And uh, and she brought forth this son, a miracle baby. Now, was Samuel a picture of Christ? Oh, yes, very much. Yes. He was priest. He was yeah. judge of Israel. He was prophet, yeah. prophet in Israel. All those things are said about Christ. Christ is our high priest. It's written in the New Testament. Mm. He is our judge. Mm. And also he is a prophet. And that is described in Deuteronomy, uh, mm. chapter 18, verse 15. It says there in Deuteronomy 18, verse 15, um, I just read that one, that Jesus was to be also a prophet who uh, <clears throat> we know. So 18, verse 15, we read, and the Lord thy God will raise unto thee a prophet in the midst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me, etc. So that's the capital P, prophet. That would mean mm. Christ. And uh, Samuel was no ordinary uh, child. He was brought up to be a priest. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, from early on, he was wearing the priest robes. You see in 1 Samuel 2, verse 18, also as a little child, raised to be a priest. When we think of Christ, he was also raised to be, to be our high priest in, in heaven. So here we see uh, in chapter 2, verse 18, you see, but Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, girded with a linen ephod. So mm -hmm. even as a child, he was wearing the, the priest robes. He was brought up to be that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he, he was a judge in Israel. It says he judged Israel all his life in, in uh, later in Samuel. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was also known as a prophet in Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, he ministered in the tabernacle, and God spoke to him directly. Yep. It was like direct <clears throat> communication. And when you think about Jesus and his father, there was direct communication between Christ and his father when he was on earth here. Mm -hmm. Okay, the sixth barren woman we find in Second Kings. I don't know if it was anyone mentioned it. In Second Kings uh, chapter 4. What woman was this? Do you know? Who had a miraculous Elijah. 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 Yes, that's right, Malo. Thank you. The woman of Shunem. Yes, that's it. Second oh, yeah. Kings 4 verse 8. Okay, here's another miraculous uh, child. 4 verse 8. And, you know, this woman, she had no children, and she was a kind woman. And it says on that day, Elisha passed to Shunem, mm -hmm. where was a great woman. She was described as a great woman. I don't know mm -hmm. what sense. I mean, she was obviously very kind. She was always caring for the prophet Elisha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she was great in, in maybe in that sense that she was so kind and uh, considerate. And she constrained him to eat bread. And so then he stayed there. Okay, so she was obviously very like that. 
And then because of the kindness here in verse 14, and Elijah says, um, what then is to be done for her? What should we do for this kind woman? He's asking his servant, mm. Gehazi. And Gehazi answered, verily, she hath no child and her husband is old. She's, mm. she's obviously barren with no children. Yeah. And uh, so Elisha thinks, what shall we do then? So then he prophesies, Elisha, he says, mm -hmm. verse 16, and he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. Mm -hmm. So Elisha promises her a son, a promised son again. It's like uh, Jesus is a promised son. Yeah. And uh, so then... You see a bit later in the next verse, and the woman conceived, verse 17, and bare a son at the season Elisha had said unto her. So then there was great joy in that household, a miracle baby, mm -hmm. a baby who goes nameless also. But is this child also a picture of Christ? You remember this, what happened in the story? Yeah, he died. He died. The little boy died, died. yes. Where was he? He was out in his father's field working with the reapers in the mm. middle of the day. It was hot. He got heat stroke. Mm. He died. When you think of Christ, where was Christ when he died? He was out in his father's field working for humanity. Yep. And then suddenly Christ died mm. in the middle of his work. So he dies unexpectedly in the middle of the day. And the mother's question is, why has a prophet given me a son only to see him die? Mm -hmm. And, of course, she sent for the prophet and he was raised to life. Mm. And when you think about Jesus, why should he die in the middle of his life when he was mm -hmm. working? Mm. Why should God give us a son? Like, a, you know, like why would he give us Christ? only to see him die. Mm. But Jesus was raised to life. Yep. So we see the picture of Christ with this boy. So that's the sixth one, the yes. sixth mm. And uh, <clears throat> we read about Jesus here mm. in Revelation 1, verse 18. I want to share that verse. In chapter 1, verse 18. It says about Jesus here, I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. That's what Jesus says. He came and died and was risen. Mm -hmm. the, the last barren woman in the, in the uh, Bible that had a miraculous baby was in the New Testament. All the rest are in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth. The last one, yes, Elizabeth, you know that. Elizabeth yeah. and Zacharias. Yeah. Yeah. And she was also a, a, a daughter, a wife of a priest. And Zacharias was a priest, mm. the daughter of Aaron, yes. Here in Luke chapter 1, we, we can share some things about uh, Elizabeth that mm -hmm. are interesting. In Luke chapter 1, verse 7. And they had no child. This is Elizabeth and Zechariah. Because Elizabeth was barren. Yep. And they were both now well stricken in years. You notice in each of these, it seems to be, well, they're too old to have children. Mm -hmm. seems to be an ongoing theme through all these stories. They're too old. Mm. They just can't have them. It's impossible. Mm. Abraham and Sarah, yes. Yeah, Abraham and Sarah were too old also, yeah. And I think some other, one of the others, I don't remember. Mm. Anyway, it always seems to be impossible, you know, and all the others are having children galore. Yep. You know, and in verse 13, it says, But the angel said unto him, to Zacharias, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth 
shall bear a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Mm -hmm. and, and in verse 37, you notice what's written, and this is all about um, having a baby. And she can, uh, we'll see the previous verse, verse 36 says, she conceived a son in her old age. Mm -hmm. So she was old. Mm -hmm. like impossible. Yeah. And yet, verse 37, note this key verse. It says, for with God, nothing it's shall impossible. be impossible. Yeah. So all these children were impossible. Mm -hmm. And nothing with God is impossible. God can... Help us have a children. Even if, you know, we have no IVF. They still had children. In miraculous ways. Okay. And then in verse 51, 57, that's sort of toward the middle of the chapter there, it says Elizabeth full time came and she, that she should be delivered and she brought forth a son. You know, there is much in John's life that parallels Jesus' life. You know? um, John was the greatest of the prophets. Jesus was also the greatest of the prophets. John lived a self-denying life, as did Jesus. Jesus says, if you come after me, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Self-denial is a feature of both John and Jesus. And John also warned the children, the uh, children of Israel, I'm saying, <laughs> Israel, he, all, he was warning them, preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the same we see and with Jesus. Jesus preached the same. Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They both preached the same thing. <laughs> and... Uh, <clears throat> And they both, uh, and poor old John was beheaded by Herod. He only lived a short life. And uh, we know that G Herod had a part in, in also when Pilate and, John, Pilate and Herod in the crucifixion of Jesus. Herod had a, a part there in scourging Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we see very similar lives, very parallel lives. And uh, between John and Jesus, and you notice in Luke chapter um, chapter one verse sixty eight, Zechariah, because of his joy of having a son, there's a, there's the song of Zechariah. It's there, and uh, he says, "Blessed be the Lord God of Israel." And the song goes down to from verse sixty eight down to verse seventy nine. We see the same with Mary when she was promised to have a son in Luke chapter uh, 1, verse 46. It's like the song of Mary. She starts off her song by, my, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and then she goes on and there's this whole song down to verse 55. So they both sing a song. Mm -hmm. So we see with John and uh, with Jesus similar lives. Even when uh, Zacharias... Zechariah was promised a son here in Luke chapter 1, verse 12. You see, his, it troubles him. And uh, it, it troubled him. <laughs> you know, fear fell upon him. He was troubled. The same we see with Mary when she was promised in verse uh, 29. <clears throat> and, it, and she sees the, the angel promising that she will have a son. And she's troubled by that. So there is much that parallels John and Jesus, and both them had their lives cut short. They both had their ministries cut short. Mm -hmm. Jesus, you know, he did his ministry for three and a half years, and in the, you know, yeah. the man, he was cut. Yeah. See, the same with John, his ministry was cut short. Yeah. So we see these pictures, uh, how, um, how similar their ministries were uh, of these miracle children. Okay, now, what great pictures we have of Jesus. And if, if the Jews had studied the word of God, they would have realized that the Messiah is coming as a baby. Mm. You know, 
Anna and Simeon knew that Jesus was coming as a baby. They knew what to look for. Maybe God revealed it to them. But a study of the word of God would reveal that the Messiah is coming as a baby. And also the verse we read in the beginning, Isaiah 9 verse 6, the Messiah is coming as a babe, and that's what to look for. Isaiah 9 verse 6. It says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the far Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So they, they could have known from their study of Isaiah from the scriptures that the Messiah was coming as a baby. Mm. One other thing I would like to suggest to you, what is God telling us with these seven barren women and their miraculous babies? What do they represent to us? Mm -hmm. It's like a picture of God's church, isn't it? A woman always represents a church. Mm -hmm. Our church, this church. And, uh, <clears throat> and if you think of all the women, God's church is like a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. Like many of these women were. They were beautiful. And God loves his church like he loved, like these men loved their wives. Mm. But there's one thing missing with God's church, and what is missing? You know, okay, maybe she's one of the family. Maybe she's, you know, the chosen one like Rebecca. Maybe she's loved best of all like Rachel. Maybe mm. she's beautiful like Sarah was. Maybe she's, you know, all these things, like Hannah with a beautiful character. That's God's church. Mm. God loves her best of all. Oh, God loves her more than the others. But the problem with God's church is what? She's barren. She's not fruitful. Mm. That was the problem. Very sad. Even though she's loved by her husband, she's not fruitful. Mm. Isn't that the picture of God's church? Yeah. She needs a child. She needs a miracle child. God's church needs that miracle child. Uh, you know, and the church, you know, maybe even they don't know their need of the child, like the woman of Shunem. She didn't even know she needed a child, but the church needs it. Or perhaps the church is like Rachel. They're desperate. Give me Jesus or I die. You know, give me a child. <laughs> I think sometimes the church is like that. We need a saviour. <laughs> and as Luke 1 verse 37 says, nothing with God is impossible. Mm. So let's go through a summary of those seven miraculous babies. The first one was Isaac. He's like the promised son, promised. And Jacob, it was like the overcomer. You know? And uh, Joseph, he was like the savior. And Samson, he's like the deliverer. Samuel, the, the priest, the judge, the prophet. And uh, and the uh, the son of the Shunammite. He is like the risen son. Mm -hmm. And last of all, John the Baptist, the greatest of the prophets. So you have these seven miraculous babies, all picturing Christ in different ways. And we have God's church, a beautiful church, but then with, without a miracle baby. And it, it seems like impossible that it would ever happen, but nothing was impossible. I want to read in Revelation 12, verse 1 and 2. This is a, a figurative picture of God's church. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Okay, it's a figurative picture, and there's no woman clothed with the sun in reality, so it's a figure representing God's church. 
and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars, the 12 mm. stars representing God's church, his kingdom. And what about this, this woman, this figurative woman? And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And then in verse, um, you know, it's not easy. Verse 5, I think, she brought forth a man-child, which were to rule the nations with the rod of iron. We know that was representing Christ. So here we have the church, barren, unfruitful. You know, when you think of Israel, it was a spiritually barren church. Mm -hmm. They were not fruitful of godliness, were they? No. Yeah, you know, and only by human works they tried to make themselves better. They were not fruitful. Mm. When yeah. Christ came, they were not fruitful. And yet among them there were those who were faithful, who waited the long ages for the Messiah to come, for the mm. miracle baby here in uh, <clears throat> um, Haggai 2 verse 7. This is one of the last verses I want to share with you. Haggai, you know that's a minor prophet there. Oh, can I find it? Yeah. How good is your Bible fingers? Uh, where is Haggai? I think it's... Uh, oh, okay. It says there in 2 verse 7... <laughs> oh, frustrates me. No, it's there somewhere. Ah, oh, there it is. After Zephaniah, oh, that's hard too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, here in Haggai two verse seven, it says, uh, "The Lord says, I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come." Who is this desire of all nations? Christ. The desire of all nations. Christ. Christ. It, this is where the book, the title for the book, The Desire of Ages, come from. You've heard of The Desire of Ages? Yes. So this is the desire of all nations. What is the desire of all ages? The desire of all nations was for Christ to come. For Jesus, second coming. Yes. yes. And they waited with pain through century after century. They waited with pain for this child to be delivered. Yep. Yeah. And it took so long. For Jesus to come, like that woman in childbirth, it took a long time. Mm. And it's, uh, I just want to read a Bible commentary. It says here, Christ, at an infinite cost, by a painful process, mysterious mm. to angels as well as to men, assumed humanity, Jesus became a human, a baby. <laughs> it's amazing. Hiding his divinity and laying aside his glory, he was born a babe in Bethlehem. So we know the story. Yep. How he became a baby. Our miracle baby. Ooh. And uh, and so finally he was come and we have this joy. And it was a joyful time. Remember the angel was saying it was a time of joy. Like you mm. see all these miracle babies. Mm. It was really joyful because it was such an unexpected impossible mm. uh, thing for him to come you know it was an impossible birth mm -hmm. uh, jesus was born and so <clears throat> we know with god he can do the impossible mm. and so we have these beautiful pictures uh, i went through very quickly because we only have so much time and my time is over but may thank god you. bless you all thank you, thank you, you to see all those pictures in the bible thank you brother. amen Amen. 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 Shall we uh, pick up our offering? <laughs>